We are so honored to have you here, Graeme. And this time you didn't come to lead worship on the stage at March for Jesus, but you came to be with us, to talk, to teach, and to spend the time with, uh, mm. with a small group of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, wherever we go together, we hear that people are saying, um, I'm so thankful to you, Graeme, for what you have done. I'm so thankful to God for your songs because I was... Um, I was singing them out in my own or uh, time of worship or where we gathered together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a part of my life. Mm -hmm. What do you see uh, today when you hear such a thing, even five minutes ago when you heard from one of us this story? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, feel, I feel joy, you know? There's a joy in knowing that something that I, I did um, many years ago, um had an effect you know it touched people's lives um and I, I think this is one of the great things about um songs of worship that uh they can find a place in people's heart but also in their minds because songs teach um they're about something um so it's it's kind of a deposit into somebody's uh, whole spiritual development, you know, at a certain time. Yes. Um, and um, and that's a very precious thing to do. It's also, um, it just reminds me what a responsibility it is uh, in the writing of those songs, that uh, the songs are the best I can make them to leave that a, a deposit, a deposit of truth, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so... I, I feel very honored to have had that opportunity in my life. Uh, we are so happy because um, the way Lord has used you in our lives and in the history of our nation and church history in Poland, it's uh, you take a big part of it. Hmm. And uh, so we're so happy that we can spend time with you now and we can share lives and, and now like walk together and, uh, so what is the, the what how will you describe deposit in a song? What does it mean? What is a worship song so special? Mm -hmm. uh, is it just an expression of a heart? Why it's so impacting our life and gathering mm -hmm. us together? I th it comes down to um, the power of the gospel, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what are we singing about? You know, there are there are many kinds of songs for many different situations, and I've written many kinds of songs, and I've written songs to express my own experience and heart and the way I see the, the world. But when it comes to the church, um, we are singing ancient truths, you know, um, and one of the songwriters' jobs, I think, is to take ancient truths and make um, and make them fresh not to change the truth but um culture changes so we need to change the way that we express music stars change you know and language changes so in every generation there needs to be new songs that touch that generation but the important thing is and i think as years go by so i see it as more and more important is that we uh we ensure that the content of our songs is is the original gospel, you know, mm. because there are many gospels, you know, in the sense that um, all through our history, people have tried to change this or change that, or um, uh, and some of the fundamental truths. But uh, in one Corinthians chapter fifteen, um, the apostle Paul. Um, talks about, he, he says to, to the, the church he's, he's writing to, I, I, I delivered to you what I received. And then he talks about Jesus, Christ, you know, Son of God, crucified, risen from the dead, and that he was seen by many witnesses. It, it's something that happened um, out of which flows, um, you know, God's whole plan, 
of saving, you know, salvation for for the world. Uh, and elsewhere, Paul talks about how um, he checked his gospel because he didn't meet the original apostles for many years. He had his own Damascus, Damascus Road experience where he saw Jesus in a vision. And then he unpacked, because he was an incredible scholar of the ancient and Jewish scriptures. So he kind of went into the scriptures, into the old, what we would call the Old Testament scriptures, mm -hmm. um, to, uh, uh, to, to read how, um, you know, is, if Jesus is in there, then, then you are the real Jesus that I saw on the road to Dam Damascus. And so he developed a theology but then he, years later, he went back to Jerusalem and he met the original apostles and checked that this was, this is it. Is this it? You know, Peter, you know, the, the, the leader of the church, is this it? You know, and Peter says, yeah, this is, this is it. And it's the same gospel today that we seek to, to follow and obey. And worship songs, um, need to have, you can't say everything in one song, you know, but every song says something about this great story. And we need to ensure that it's, it's, the, it's what we received, not what we are constructing out of influence too much by this cultural moment. I remember it was many years ago when I was a, a bit younger, I was at your workshops, uh, your workshops, for, your workshop for uh, songwriters and worship leaders, and you said we don't write or sing uh, new things, but the ancient truth yeah. in a new way. That's right, and that's creativity. That's right. Yeah, and that's yeah. what you've done, and then your uh, spiritual sons, and uh, keep doing it. And that's what we are learning here in Poland as well. Mm -hmm. So, so does it mean that this truth, uh, hidden in the songs, can gather anyone, all generations together, mm -hmm. women, men, kids together? Is that the the uh, the resonance of of Christ? Uh, that he's gathering us together mm -hmm. uh, in worship? I think the, yes, um, I, there's, a, there's a term that's often used about the church of worship and it's public truth. Yeah. Now, if I write a song just about the way I, my experience, the way I see the world, the way I see this or that, you know, that's fine. You know, you can say, okay, well, that was Graham's experience. That's, you know, and that's how he feels about it. But when it comes to putting songs in the mouths of believers, um, it needs to be public truth. It's, uh, and, and it's saying just what I, what I was just saying, it needs to be the truth, the historic uh, gospel that's come come to us. And I think when you do that, it becomes something that um, Christians of, of every age and background can, can sing, you know? Um, if we concentrate on the core truths of the gospel, um, people from many different denominations can, uh, can sing the same song. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we saw this uh, in, in England when, when there was a, uh, an early move of new songs being written, uh, first in, in, in the 1970s and then into the 80s. And there was this new worship phenomenon with, with guitars and drum kits and, you know, it was, it was like a new cultural expression of the ancient truths. Um, but um, these songs um, began to travel. You know, they began to cross boundaries of denominations, um, and also events would also uh, uh, also happen, particularly in in the in the eighties. For example, one I was closely involved with um, it was called Spring Harvest because it happened so, sort of the beginning of spring, um, and it started with just about three thousand young people, and at its peak, it was eighty thousand people were were coming, but they were coming not just from one denomination. They were coming from anywhere. Any, anyone could come. Um, 
and somehow the leaders managed to uh, there was a enough of a unity among leaders from different places that this was a joint um uh project you know the these annual every year it would happen this event um, and so songs were drawn from all different kinds of streams uh, and sung. Um, and so, this, you know, if you can, if you're, if you're worshiping together in a great crowd and you know all those, those around you are just loving God and, you know, expressing gratitude and thanksgiving and sensing the presence of God, you don't nudge the person next to you and say, oh, do you, you know, do you go to the same denomination as, as me? Because if you don't, I'm not sure I should be standing next to you. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you. You know, you see their faces, you know, worshiping, and you and you know, it, you know the same Jesus. So there is a unity that comes um, when we we worship together. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we put the we make the main thing the main thing. You know, that's right. Uh, and that's um, and we don't worry too much about the the details. They're important, but you know we start if we start in worshiping together, this great God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You yeah. know, yeah. we can go a long way before those other things start to matter. Yeah. So it's not the idea just worship, but the person, the message is in the is the core of our unity. Yeah. Who He is. Yeah. And um so your personal it starts with your personal life change, personal relationship with Jesus, Christ the Savior. And uh but it couldn't just stay in your room. You started to express who he is yeah. and that influence others, your church, community, whole mm -hmm. nation mm -hmm. and nations. Um Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Yeah. Send forth your word, Lord, and let be there let be the light. Hmm. Flow, river, flow. And um, you wrote this song in eighties, hmm. and I remember we've been singing it on the streets of Wrocław, the city where wow. I grew up, hmm. and it was five thousand of us singing together. Hmm. People who gather for the purpose of giving glory to, to Jesus. Mm. So it's such a power in gospel. Mm. Jesus is, is not an idea, he's a life. Mm. And we sing out loud about who he is and what he mm. has done. Mm. And uh, it crosses the boundaries, not just mm. of denominations, but nations as well. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, even even nations and that song in particular, you know, yeah. went just all over, <laughs> all over the all over the world. Um, but it, it was, it it didn't just come out of me sitting in my room on my own. Although mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time working on the song in my room on my own. Yes. But at that time, um, I was so much a part of a a movement. Um, not just one movement, but there were many movements that actually were in good relationship with one another. <clears throat> and uh, I was in a church in London, uh, which had a very strong vision uh, for uh, the gospel on many levels. You know, it, it was uh, social action. It was, you know, it was reaching out to to the poor and and justice issues and so on. Yes. It was also preaching the gospel. It was prayer. It was mission. It was mission to wherever, you know, any end to the ends of the earth, you know? Um, and so in that atmosphere, there was a sense in which I wasn't just writing my songs. I was trying to write the song of the church, you know? I was trying to write the song that we needed to sing, mm -hmm. you know? Um and uh, and that certainly became uh, a feature, you know. I uh, it just became natural actually because I was part of that movement, you know. I was uh, I was doing what we did, you know. I was taking part in in the mission of the church, so I just sang, you know, sang what we were doing and who we saw we were, you know, and tried to make it as broad as possible because actually. 
everybody, you know, in these movements, we shared that same vision. Uh, and there was a sense in which the church had been hiding away, you know. Um, uh, there'd been a few decades of decline in the church, you know, and now a new generation was rising. And we started to believe we could actually impact the nation mm. and the nations, you know. Before it was just survival, you know, right. like a, what it, in English we call a siege mentality. It's like, we're this little church, you know, yeah. and we just got to make build the walls a little higher because, you know, otherwise we're going to disappear entirely. Yeah. And now we were taking the walls off the church and we were thinking, yeah, you know, we have a great God. He can do great yeah. things. Yeah. So I think it, that song in particular caught a sense of hope and excitement and vision. Um, and um, uh, it, it was a moment. It was a moment. Yeah. There are other songs like We Believe. And it wasn't about us. It was about him. Yeah. It was gathering us uh for him mm. for his purposes to yeah. glorify him and that's what was expressed in your songs and all really worship songs are mm. about him and mm. how how we can react to who he is even mm. in mm. if it, even if it's personal i mean throughout the ages there are always different emphases that mm -hmm. come in the church and usually songs are written out of the bigger picture that's that's happening and the emphases that there are and that can be a very good good thing because you can go back to uh, different periods of church history and mm -hmm. through the hymns and songs you can tell what was important to that generation and it may be that you think oh my goodness we should be singing about that now you know they sang about that you know 500 years ago or something and mm -hmm. uh, we're in danger for, you know so we can learn uh, a great deal from from you know previous generations and try to bring bring a balance but i think one of the things that i've seen um and i'm, I'm sure we're in again a time of balance that um you know there was this missional uh um vision particularly in in the 80s mm -hmm. um and we sang about uh go in the ends of the earth and preach the gospel and make disciples and so on. And then I think there was also um, uh, an era that perhaps was neglected, um, that of intimacy, um, where, you know, uh, there was stream that flowed in, which was very, very good, in, in which helped us to draw closer to Christ in intimate times of worship. But I... And there was a moment where those flowed together, you know, and learned from each other. And this is one of the great things about streams of worship. If we if we isolate those streams, then we can become unbalanced. But if we let those streams flow together, then uh, we can draw strength from from one another and get balance between. Oh, well, they're doing that over there, and they're doing it here. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Um, I think there is, if you talk about intimacy, if you overemphasize that, we start to the church starts to look inwards. If we only ever sing, sing songs about me and God, you know, we we forget many things. We forget actually we are a community, you know, right? And we need also songs about community, about us together, you know. Uh, the scripture describes worship. Um, uh, as both vertical and horizontal, you know, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual That's songs, right. you know, giving thanks to the Lord from your heart. You know, it's vertical and, and horizontal. And um, so we need, I think of it, in, just picking up some words that some, some somebody else, you know, we need intimacy and majesty mm -hmm. together, you know. We need to proclaim the Jesus who is the Lord of, of the earth and the King of the nations, you know, and who has his massive purposes. Yeah. But also we need to draw near 
to the, the Jesus who's the friend of sinners and who's a healer and, you know? So it's finding that balance. And sometimes by learning from different streams and different movements, we can begin to find that balance. Yeah. Mm, you said that uh, we need good relationships to do it. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, where to start with? How do you build good relationships so you are able, or how are you, uh, what, uh, um, what makes you sincere or open that you see that God is, uh, God is using other people, that he is present in different streams? How to start with? Is it just that it is a struggle, all the time a struggle, or it is a freedom? <laughs> Well, I think the biggest struggle is is often with our own insecurities, right. you know, um, and trying to learn the Jesus way, you know, which was, you know, the greatest among you is the servant of all, you know, mm. and oh, that's you know, how do how do you work work that out? Because you know, the world's model is is about power and lording it over other people. Uh, you know, Jesus made it very clear. No. You don't lord it over other people. You serve them, and then God raises you up. You know, he raises up the humble, and he brings down the proud. So yeah. we have to embrace the Jesus way, mm. uh, uh, you know, as best we can. And for that, we have to be sometimes broken mm. and then healed, you know, and broken and healed, and um, and that whole, whole process. <clears throat> But if... Um, If we are on that journey, then I think the next thing is food. You eat food together. To you, carry get, on. you get around the table yeah. and you share a meal and you are just people together. You know? Um, you know, you can have conferences which are good and you try and work out this or that issue. And, you know, there are times for that. But uh, <clears throat> a lot of things are solved when we simply spend time with other people, we get to know them, we listen to them. You know, we're so full of our own vision, and it could be a very good vision, yeah. you know, uh, that we're not hearing anybody else, mm. you know? But if we can just be quiet enough, long Before enough them. to listen mm. and to understand where people are coming from, you know? And there are often reasons why somebody has taken a position different from us you know mm -hmm. we only find that out by listening so i think you know food and friendship um uh, and i mean march for jesus you mentioned earlier yeah <clears throat> eventually had a had a, a impact all around the world i mean it was how many nations millions. oh 100, 130 100, more more 170 yeah, nations 70, or something millions of people every in every time zone you know um yeah. It would roll around the world. You People know? gathering together and marching to that, um, worshiping, praying, yeah, and yeah. praying for the nation, for yeah. needs, for governments, and yeah. praising Jesus together on the streets. On the streets, yeah, yeah. And really, that wouldn't have happened hmm. if several leaders of move of significant movements, church movements, which were actually rising and you know, getting some strength would get together. It's because they sat around the table not to hammer out an argument, but to eat food and be friends and learn from each other. And that became one of the core values of March for Jesus. And the reason I think why God blessed it, because, you know, Psalm 133, where brothers dwell together in unity, You know, there the Lord has commanded the blessing. Mm. You know, uh, it, it's it's a it's a, it, it's a hidden. Well, it's not a hidden. It's an open secret. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a secret of success. But it's, an, it's open. It's right there. In the, is that how the renewal is coming? Is how is that's how the God wants to really reveal or release His blessing uh, in a way that we even never dreamt of. 
Well, I think it must be if, you know, if God's word is true and, you know, um, he blesses unity and humility, yeah. uh, then it, it has to be a, a, major, a major thing. And yeah. if you look through history, so many things began wonderfully and then they ended in, in disputes, hmm. you know, and relationship breakdowns. And, and yeah. uh, that's a very sad history, but we need to try and learn from it and ask ourselves the question, am I just, you know, uh, um, whose interests am, am I fighting for? Is it, right. is, it, is it for my power and influence or is it for the kingdom of God, you know? Kingdom it's, of God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the key is Christ in us, Christ in me. That's the, the starting point to meet with you, to listen to you and to receive what God is doing through you, and that, and that's how you showed the, the rivers, the streams are coming together. Yes, yes, it, it's it's. I think that's that's such a key. Christ, Christ in us, the hope in of us. glory, seeing Christ in one another, and. Um, you know, and sometimes you know we we create lots of filters, so <laughs> Christ in us is a bit hard to see sometimes. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, uh, I mean, I can remember sitting there um, tra traveling with a, a, a close friend who was a strong leader. You know, um, and often strong leaders can make some en enemies or upset people or whatever. Yeah. You know, because they get things done. That. Yeah. But, you know. Um, well, and I, I remember many sacrifices around. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that is, and, that is. Um, and you know, a lot of people had 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 been saying to him that they weren't sure they could trust him. You know. Yeah. And a lot was at stake because we were close friends. You know, and he asked me the question. He said, "Graham, do you trust me?" And I thought, "Oh my goodness!" You know. There's there's a few there's a few things that I struggle with, you know. Yeah. But I think God gave me the wisdom to say, friend, I trust Christ in you. You know. Mm. It's not to say you can do what you like, you know. <laughs> yeah. That I trust that Christ is in you. He's with you, that he's working in you. I, I don't even trust myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But exactly. I, I yeah. trust the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to see what God is doing and discern that. Um, and, uh, you know, that 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 was, a, for me also, was a, it gave me an answer to, <laughs> to his question, but I think it, it helped me to understand something as well, that we, we look for Christ in one another. Um, yeah, and we listen. You said uh, something about what that you have discovered that what needs to be sung, what needs to be uh, yeah. declared, and uh, <laughs> and it's not what you like. It's not just what you prefer. Yeah, yeah. But again, what what needs to be sung at loud? What mm. needs to be sung to gather us together mm. and to God be glorified in this season? Is it the same what it was 10, 20, 30 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, one of the realities about the, um, the world that we live in, um, uh, and the internet is one of the biggest, you know, cultural shifts, you know, for maybe you know, hundreds of years, I don't know, perhaps ever, um, that um, things are driven uh, by popularity you know mm -hmm. alone you know so um if a song uh if a worship song becomes popular it gets pushed up it, it trends and um the algorithms push it up and people like it and share it and, and so on and that means there's probably, there's probably some very good things about that that song okay but it becomes popular and then you get a whole roster of of popular songs uh, and they're 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 in the like the top fifty or whatever it is because people like them, okay. But is that enough? You know, the, uh, so it's asking the question. Um, we know what's popular, you know, but what songs does the church need in this season? Mm -hmm. You know, 
And what is, and that's not going to be a global thing either. You know, there are some songs that just bless everywhere, which is great. I use them, you know, in church. Mm -hmm. There are certain songs you think, this is so great. I can use it unless it blesses my local church, you know. But there are other criteria, you know. So the way I kind of understand it is because I grew up in the age of hymn books, right? I was a Baptist. My father was a Baptist pastor, and we had the Baptist hymn book, our denominational hymn book. And in the back, there was an index, you know, you could look for songs and all kinds of themes and 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 uh, subjects and for times of the of the year and Christmas and Easter and and so many different uh, occasions. Um, and those hymn books um, don't come from nowhere, you know. Uh, there is always um, there always was a and many hymn books are still published, but there is always a committee that meets and reassess. So. Mm -hmm. the downside is you only get a new edition every 25 years or so <laughs> you have to wait a long time but the upside is that there are a group of people whom uh, a, a movement a church movement have decided these are responsible people that you know they they have a theological understanding their musical understanding they have a partial understanding um and so they have chosen these songs believing that they are we will serve this movement, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so you get new songs coming in and old ones may be dropped because they're not, you know, so useful anymore. But there is a filter, okay? Now, in the present situation, I think the only place there is any filter anymore uh, is the local church. Or perhaps if community. there was a network of churches, mm -hmm. yeah, the, a, a community, um, that realize, that wake up to the fact um, there is no other gatekeeper to what we sing, you know? Um, what's popular may be great for us, but it may not. We may need other songs at this time. So are we going to use that ability? Now, and I must say also that that shouldn't be a heavy-handed thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, there is a, a relationship that has to be built up between a pastor and a and a worship leader mm -hmm. where these kind of things are are discussed in my own church now i i you know um i i still lead worship in my local church i don't i'm not in charge of the worship but i'm on the we have a rota of worship leaders right yes. uh, seven worshipers and i'm one of those okay so my turn comes round and uh, you know but now and again we get together with our senior leader, and we talk about these things. And for example, recently um, we've discussed, and he said, look, this season, particularly after um, the, the, the lockdown and COVID and everything like that, everyone was shut away. We need songs of joy. You know, mm -hmm. we think, great, we need songs of joy. Where can we get songs of joy? There are no songs of joy. There are, yeah, they need we, to be written. We they do need to be written. We we found a few, and we tried one or two, but some were just hard for us to do because we couldn't just, you know, we couldn't deliver Again, in our yeah. local church. Yeah, we didn't have the the skills, you know, to deliver that that vibe, you know, that yeah. feeling, that style, you know. So we had to go back to older songs, you know. Mm. Because we want it, um, that's still a question. We're still saying, where are the songs of joy? Because popularity has created a genre which is very similar, mm -hmm. you know? And it's very much that internal, I call it emotional intensity, you know? And every song is kind of, you know, God, me loving God and God loving me, you know? And they may be very good. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we do that all the time, we just get exhausted, you know? We also discussed, have been discussing, you know, God's working us as a loving community, loving one another. Where are the songs of community? <clears throat> Very hard to find, you know? Um, so, and you could go on with listing many other things, you know, mm. a mission, you know, uh, yeah. and so on. Um, so 
I think the local church, the local worshiping community, and the networks that are in close relationship need to begin to pray and discuss and seek God. What are the songs our church needs to be singing at this time? So concluding, that's my last question to you today <laughs> or before lunch. <laughs> um, talking about unity in church, talking about giving glory to our God in unity. What is a song all about in this reality we're talking about? Why do we sing songs? Uh, what is so special about song of worship in terms of worshiping God in unity? Uh. <laughs> Um, well, I'm sure there are many aspects, but I think I think the the central one is that we are worshiping God. Okay, now, yeah, of course we're worshiping God, but what is it about God that we are worshiping? And if you're thinking about unity, you know, God is a unity, a triunity: Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, and that's another thing that's missing is Trinitarian songs. You know, if we sang more about the nature of God. You know, um, we would begin, I think, to to with our faces lifted to this God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and where there is a mutual serving and loving, and and, mm. and uh, you know, in God Himself, it's the nature of God. Yes, and you know, the call Unity. to us is mm. to be like God. You know, um, and. Uh, uh, You know, there's that great picture of, um, you know, the it's like, um, you know, the father, um, and like one arm is is the son, is Jesus, the other is the Holy Spirit, and so he brings us together, mm. you know, um, through the work of the through uh, the Father's love and the work of the cross and the present power of the Holy Spirit. Well, we've got to get our eyes off ourselves because. We we're not seeking unity so we can just fulfill some great project we have, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> And uh, it the project is God's glory, you know. And so our focus on Him, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, worshiping this God of unity, and and then discovering what flows out of that, you know, which is loving God, and then oh, what's next? Loving your neighbor. You know, so out of one flows flows the other. What is what is God like? He's like this. He's merciful. He's kind. So we're following Jesus. So oh, okay. So that's how we should be. You know, and it flows out mm. from the work putting God at the center. Graham, we're so thankful to you. Thank you that you are with us and uh, you are sharing food together and we can mm -hmm. uh, that you mm -hmm. are listening to us and listening uh, to us and uh, and what God is doing mm -hmm. here in our nation and we are blessed mm -hmm. thank you very much and we are expecting God's uh, pouring his blessing uh, through your nation as well mm -hmm. because he, he has been doing it some ways 20 30 years ago yeah. but now we see in Poland that he's uh he's ble uh, he's pouring his blessing upon us mm. through your nation uh in a different way mm. and we are so uh, surprised and we're so thankful thank you very much thank you <laughs>